Hello there, I'm Scotty, you're not, and as promised, I will be reviewing every episode of the final season of The Flash after it airs. Uh, I just finished it, you know, 7 p.m. Central Time. Uh, so, yes. Uh, season 9, episode 1. Wednesday Ever After, and... Uh, when I read the synopsis for this, I was like, really? We're starting off with filler? I mean, literally, this has been done in this show before with Nora in season five, I think it was. And then on Legends of Tomorrow, Legends of Meow Meow, I think it was called, they did, you know, time loop. So I'm like, oh, we're starting with the filler. And while it's sort of filler, there is important stuff that goes down that connects to the first big threat because unfortunately and I say unfortunately we are doing still doing the graphic novel format despite the fact that we only have 13 freaking episodes I know like half the episodes are going to be fuller filler because I don't know I, f I feel like it should just be one con Consistent story, but they're gonna do one thing and another thing and yeah uh, and No, don't expect Anything from the cliffhanger of last season because I'm pretty sure that's gonna be handled in the second half of the season What I have heard this is Different um, so the plot of this episode is that Barry has created this book of everything that's gonna happen in the future and he want Iris to get on board with it, but Iris, of course, is against it because she's got to say no to fuck on everything. And, uh, <clears throat> and so, uh, uh, meanwhile, a new version of Captain Boomerang has arrived, but, uh, then both Barry and, I almost said Myra, I don't know why, Iris are stuck in a time loop. Um, so, yeah, um, so we start off with what I thought was going to be something that's been done before in this show where you have something's happening and then it cuts off and says 12 hours earlier, but no, because I'm like, oh, are we doing this 12 hours earlier stuff? We start with the Flash fighting off this big lava monster guy and the members of Team Flash come in and, you know, uh, Jester and... Allegra and Cecile, and then Frost shows up. Then they both, they all stop this monster. I'm like, wait, this has to be a dream then. And then each member of Team Flash is, and Iris, is attacked by this red lightning in their eyes, which is, if, if you know who the first villain of the season is, you know the connection to what is, what the red lightning is and what the connection is. And I'm probably going to ruin this character. But I will watch and I will see whether or not they do. But, you know that this probably connects to it. And he says when he wakes up, he's had the same dream every night. So, combine that with the fact that we find out that he's gather information from the future. Maybe this is something from the future, a message from the future telling him, warning him about something. Who knows? But right away, we see that uh, he is, uh, he already knows some stuff because he tells Iris, he goes, whatever happens, just say yes. You know what that means? Sell it. Yeah. Say yes. He's like, Okay, and yes, indeed, we do find out she has an offer from Cat Grant of, I forgot what the hell that place was called, Catco, to buy the Central City Citizen Media, just call it the Central City Citizen CCC Media, CCC Media, to buy her building and expand it to a worldwide product. And, you know... Uh, and it, much like with time loop stuff, you get stuff like 
uh, stuff that Allegra talks to her about. And then, uh, you know, she says, just, you just say yes. And then she's like, wait a minute, I need to get in, uh, I forgot my phone at home. And so, uh, Barry goes to talk to, um, Captain, I forgot her name, Captain Kramer, goes to talk to, talk to Kramer, and, uh, he's like, I want to be the director of the CSI or something like that. She's like, well, I was just going to offer you that. That's when it starts to sing. oh, he already has this book. He's already figured out. I would have liked to have seen him put an information together, but he's already got it. We've got 13 episodes. So, and they got to go quicker, quicker. And itchy, dry skin. But, um, yeah. And she's like, you sure you can handle it? That... CSI made a flash. He goes, he goes, yeah, yeah, I can. And then a Cord Industries, and they have used Cord Industries so much in this. I'm just waiting for a, a Blue Beetle to pop up. Because if you don't know, Ted Cord is the first Blue Beetle from the comics. I believe he's the first. And they're doing the Jamie Reyes version because culture, cultural, you know, diver, diversion, diversity, cultural diversity. Which is fine, you know. That with the announcement of the Booster Gold show. Maybe we'll see him on there. Who knows? Uh, can't wait to see Chris Pratt as Booster Gold, though, because you know that's what's going to happen with James Gunn and Josh. I'm going to say, he's too well, he's too well. It doesn't matter. He's going to... It's going to be him. But anyway, so... Uh, <clears throat> what was that? Yeah, so he runs out and we get our first... Glimpse on TV, we've seen set photos, you know, of Owen Mercer, the Owen Mercer version of Captain Boomerang. We saw the, uh, the other version, the, uh, Digger Harkness version here, and the Suicide Squad, and they unrightfully killed him in the Suicide Squad. Thanks, James Gunn. I don't even care, you kill him off in the first ten minutes. Anyway, uh, this is the Owen Mercer version Played by Richard Harmon from uh, Grave Encounters 2. Thankfully, he didn't bring Trevor. Uh, but yes, uh, I would say he's not bad. He's actually pretty good. Although, I don't like the fact that they knew he had escaped from Iron Heights. I feel like he, this should be an entirely new character they never met before. I hate it when they bring people in. That are new characters that these audience have met. Oh, yeah, you were in Iron Heights. But he's been in a, That's not a way to explain that a new character we haven't seen before. He's been in Iron Heights all these years. That's why you don't know. But that doesn't explain why they didn't bring him up. Yeah. And he's got the little hat thingy and the jacket. And he's trying to steal this thing from one of Cord Industries machines. And he and the Flash fight. And then... He gets away, uh, but the, the, he then we go home. Oh, also, uh, Joe is training Cecile to use her powers now that she has telekinesis. So she, she's training her to do the football through the tire hoop thing. And uh, yeah, <clears throat> um, uh. So, Barry basically tells Iris about the notebook he put together. And, of course, she's got to say no because that's all she can fucking do. Is say no to everything. Why? Why, writers, do you have to write Iris as the person who always says no to everything? My problem with this is this book he has is their future. It is their future. In the notebook telling what they must do. And she's like, no, I want to be able to choose. You can't. This is literally your 
future. This is what is supposed to happen to you. So for all intents and purposes, you have, it's like, what about free will? You don't have free will. Not in this case. This is your future right here. Everything in this book that you put together is your future and you have to follow it or you might not. Don't you understand? Don't you understand? They try to tiptoe around this and find a way to kind of go with her idea of what she wants to do. But don't you understand? In nine years and all the time travel stuff that has happened to you and your family. That if you do one thing, one thing out of what you're supposed to do, it could crush everything like that. One wrong thing and it's gone. You saying no to one thing could lead you to not to an entirely different future. And she's like, no, I don't want to do that because I want free will. I'm sorry, but that is literally your, your future. In that book, what you're supposed to do, and it's... <sighs> so they go to bed angry, they wake up the next morning, and it's all starting over again. And I guess they go through this time loop about 58 times. The first time, and it's very weird how they do it. Because it cuts to Iris, and she's being talked to by Allegra. She's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she even, you know, says, oh, watch out. And stops the one person from running into her. But it's like, wait, did you already figure out something's going on? And she's like, oh, let's have deja vu. I'm like, deja vu. This is not deja vu. This is everything from before happening again. And then when Kramer invites Barry in the office, she, she tells him, oh, I've been, yeah, I thought we already talked about that. No, I'm supposed to take this. And, you know, I'm with Barry here. Like, he's supposed to, like, you know, he's sure. Because Barry knows that the whole thing with, because he's time traveled enough, he should know how to stick to certain things. So he knows. I'm not saying he's completely in the right, but I'm just saying he knows. But, you know, and then he has to go to the transport and fights him off. Uh, but Barry didn't notice anything else before he got to Kramer's office that would have indicated he was living the same day again. No? Okay. Um, but this time, Barry dies. Or no, he doesn't die here. Uh, the day does repeat again. No, no, he does die here. Because Iris... Realizes that something's up. She goes to the cortex, and then there's an explosion, and Barry dies, and they both end up back in the bed. And there's several times where they keep going, uh, because uh, so then they try to talk to Chester and them, Team Flash, about what's going on, and there's some kind of mechanism that caused Barry to have, like time force energy, whatever it's called, the. Uh, Tachyon energy is making him go in a temporal, both of them go in a temporal loop. I don't understand how Iris is in there. Maybe because she's connected to the speed force too, so that's why. I don't know. Um, temporal energy, that's what I'm thinking of. Temporal energy. So, Barry gets the device from Cord Industries, which doesn't, well, we don't get that far. I don't, that, According to our point of view, nothing changes with Mercer, but, I don't know. Um, so they get the thing and they try to tamper with it, it explodes. And we get several loops of it exploding, no matter what they do, it's going to explode. But at one point, they just reach to touch it and it explodes. I'm like, no, no, that's, <laughs> what, because it barely touches it, it's like this. But then this is the thing and it's sitting on the thing and it goes like this. And it explodes before they even touch it. They didn't even mess with it yet. And yes, because this is an hour support compared to, like, have a death day, which is an hour and a half. They don't have time. Plus, they have to make room for commercials, so it's basically 45 minutes. Uh, they don't have time to explain, you know, stuff to people. So, just, they are already in the loop. In the loop. Um, so, um, Barry and Iris didn't have another argument. 
because she's decided she's just going to live out her day and do whatever, and Barry doesn't want to do that. He believes they should follow this, and that Iris has to say yes to the offer from Catco in order for it to stop. Despite the fact that they never once established it, that's why. It's because he absorbed the temporal energy, right? So what does that do with anything? I don't know. <clears throat> I don't know. It's even more confusing at the end when they try to explain it. But anyway, so they have an argument, and Barry it basically runs around the city all day, and then shows up at Joe and Cecile's house. And they have a little bit of talks in the future that, like, they're going to end up living in that house, which kind of connects to the ending of the episode. We'll talk about it. And that uh, Nora's going to fall down the steps, like one of the, one of the steps. She's a baby. Uh, by the way, Iris is supposed to be pregnant three months from this point in time. So, depending on how long it takes for the game itself to play out, three months from now would be in May. Also, this is on the 1st. So was this supposed to start last week and they decided to wait till now? Because, I don't know, it starts on February 1st, 2023. Should they have put it on last week to make more sense? Because, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. But, anyways, um, so then Joe has one of his famous speeches about, you know, everything in his future... It shows you what's going to happen, but it doesn't say how it happens. It doesn't say how things happen. It doesn't say, you know, all that. So, basically, they found a roundabout way to keep the stuff, doing the stuff that's in this, but also in a way that also gives them freedom as to how they get it done. Basically. How they do that as a couple. Because they go to see Kramer together. And uh, Barry gets the job. Then they go to Central City Media. They're at Central City Media together first. And then, I guess she's called uh, Sue Dearborn. And in spite of the fact that we're probably never going to get Ralph back, they keep bringing her in there. And she, they brought money from her so that uh, they're going to buy the Coast City uh, newspaper. Coast City Gazette, I believe. And they're going to um, make that their... I'm guessing it's going to be Coast City Media. Coast City Citizen Media. Still going to be CCC. Does that make sense? And then uh, they face off against Owen Mercer together, which I have a problem with. The Flash and Iris West in the same place at the same time. No one's going to find that a little weird, a little strange that, uh, you know, CSI's wife is with the Flash. I mean, I know that she had written stories on the Flash. Maybe she's there for that, but they basically hug at the end of this, and it's like, okay, I don't want to see this, but I have a feeling they're going to do a story, a filler episode, about someone took a picture of them hugging together, and, you know, someone's going to blackmail Iris or something. I have a feeling it's going to... Just because you can't do something like that without having... I've seen it done too many times in TV. But, oh, look. <clears throat> you know? In fact, they did that on Lois and Clark. Because uh, Clark, in a Superman suit, kissed Lois. So then, like, oh, Superman's having an affair with Clark Kent's wife. So, yeah. Uh, Lois and Clark. That's it. Lois and I said Lois and Clark. I meant Superman. That's what I meant. Lois and Clark. Well, I, I meant Lois and Clark. If I didn't say that, that's what I meant. So they defeat Mercer sort of together. They blast him. And they blast him with this thing, and he just gets back up. I'm like, wait, what? How? Huh? He's got some kind of superpower, but he does get away with the thing, which it doesn't blow up despite falling. He gets away with the thing. And he teleports with a red light, which I think is supposed to hint at our villain. And um, then he's gone. So we get some, you know, wraparound stuff. That he and Iris, uh, the, they ask, okay, so how did you stop? Because it's Thursday. How did you stop the loop? Oh, we, 
she basically, you know, we said yes, but in her own way. I'm like, no, that's not how it happened. It's because you stopped Mercer. Because you shot him. It had to be. It makes no sense. Uh, the loop had nothing to do with the damn book. So, in other words, they didn't know. In other words, when they were writing it, they didn't really know how to end it. So they just made up that excuse. Because it doesn't make any sense that saying yes after all the... Basically saying yes. Stopped it. When they didn't actually say yes, they did a whole thing. I, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, also, oh, no, the thing, I forgot to say, the thing is about to explode. So I'm thinking this is what happened. When the thing went, when the bomb explodes, but Barry vibrates it, so it doesn't actually kill anyone. There's no radiation. It just doesn't, no one gets hurt from the fire. It just goes through everyone. And maybe that's what stopped the loop. Also, Chester and Allegra kissed. Look, I know a lot of people don't like that. I don't care. I'm just glad they finally did. But I don't like the fact that after they kissed, they're like, oh, just be a fucking couple. I mean, come on. I know in one of the uh, episode synopses later, they say they're taking the next step. So eventually they're going to be a couple, but I don't like to take so long to do it. Uh, and then Joe at, uh, talking to Cecile. And he wants to leave Central City. This is because the actor who plays Joe is going to be on a different TV show. He's not a regular. The opening has John Cor, who is Chill Blaine, Mark Blaine, Chill Blaine, who wasn't in this episode, by the way, but he's in the opening now, replacing Joe. Um, the actor who plays Joe is on a different show, so he's only in a few episodes, half episodes this season. So, yes, this sets up his departure, I think, but. Cecile's not leaving, so I don't... Are they gonna break up? I hope not. She's supposed to be Grandma Cecile to Nora and Bart, so... I mean, I guess she could still be Grandma Cecile, even if she's not. She's still part of the Flash family, I guess. Although she's not married to him, I would... I would go for... If she's not with him, I would... I would maybe... Call her Aunt Cecile. Grandma Cecile. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, that's there's that. And then we have a cliffhanger, first cliffhanger, where we get a glimpse at the new Caitlin Frost thing from the end of last season. And what? She looks like Caitlin, but with blue streaks in her hair. Yeah, I couldn't come up with something more creative than that. And she's like, I'm not Caitlin, I'm not Frost. Well, then what are you? Before she can say what she is, it cuts off. And so we get the Flash logo, and then we get the real cliffhanger for the episode, which is Mercer going back to a lab, saying uh, he's almost out of boomerangs, and then new boomerangs are given to him. He's got the little thing, and then we see a red lightning ghost thing, which, you know, if you didn't figure out from this, they show the logo, and it's Red Death which I've already talked about, is going to be played by Javessica Leslie. I'm sorry if I this to now, so I don't care. I, I have voiced my anger at what they did with Batwoman after season one. They should have just recasted Kate Kane and not bothered with a new character or creating... To me, it felt like too much of a hassle to introduce a new character and bring in her story when you already had Kate Kane's story going, just recast her, but no, no. And I'm, I'm never gonna be 100% sure on this, but I, I firmly believe that they thought, hey, if we can cast someone of color, then we can capitalize on two different markets, the LGBT and the African-American market. That's what, it feels like a business decision over a creative decision. That's why I stopped watching Batwoman. Because this felt like we're going to make money off of people. Rather than we're telling a story from the comics about this person. No, we're going to make some random bitch up. Chick. Some random chick up. I don't want to say that word. Some random chick up and she's going to be the new character. It just never sat right with me and so I never watched it. Beyond that, they also ended up recasting with 
the chick from Krypton with some kind of bizarre story where she's Hush's sister or something. I, I don't know. I never, I didn't watch it. I just heard some things. Maybe I'll go back and watch it. I kind of feel like I have to if I want to understand what's going on. But then again, this is probably going to be an alternate version of her. So who knows? But I really didn't like how they were, what they did with Batwoman. So I stopped watching it. I really, I liked the first season. And then I went out the window after that. So yeah, but this first episode, now I'm done ranting about Batwoman again. Not bad. When I heard about this book thing, I'm like, okay, what are we doing here? Because what are we doing here? What this? I don't know. I just I wanted to go in guns blazing, and then we have this book thing, and on top of that, it's now a time loop episode. It's just it feels like filler, and the first episode of the season should not feel like filler. And I think the problem lies with the fact that the last two season openers were part of something different which is why they went full blazing, right? The first episode of season seven was continuing off of the end of season six because of COVID and the cutoff and all that stuff. And first episode of season eight was part of a five-part event. So we got that started pretty well with this row and everything. Here, it feels like it's a bit filler, but there's still enough story elements setting up. Like, you knew Owen Mercer wasn't going to get caught because you know there's something with the rose we're not going to spoil who might all be in there but if you've seen the the preview trailer for next week uh you know at least one might be in there so uh and we know another character might also show up so who knows um I just realized I did this and you're thinking, hush, it's not hush, it's another quiet meta uh, that's already been done on Arrow, just so you know, but I gotta wrap this up because it's taking long, uh, but overall I thought it was decent, um, hoping it gets better, uh, stop writing Iris as the naysayer because she can honestly be a better written character than that, I'm just saying, and for all her naysaying she basically did what was in the book anyway, in a different roundabout way, but she still did it. So, again, it was just a waste of time for the episode to make it its proper conclusion. I'm just saying. But, uh, yeah, so what are your thoughts on episode one of season nine? Season nine, episode one. Wednesday ever after. It, um, going forward, it's probably going to be the same thumbnail, but with different words on it. It's just easier for me. And, you know, the episodes are live. I don't want to try to get a picture from each one. It's easier just to do one thumbnail with different writing on it. Different description, you know. So, uh, thanks for watching. I've been Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.